Nigerians have their buba dress, and the Ugandans their gomesi. But Kenyan designers like Patricia Mbella bemoan the lack of a distinctive outfit in this conservatively dressed country. You have to wear a tie and a nice skirt suit when you go to work. And it's just, if you go with a tie-dye shirt to the office, you're most likely to get your boss call you in and tell you that's not something you wear to the office unless it's a dress down Friday. Which, it's sad, but it doesn't make sense. Mbella was one of nine designers selected to create a Kenyan national dress in a competition six years ago, an idea that did not catch on. In a country with more than 40 ethnic groups, most having a distinctive dress of their own, designers say it is a challenge to come up with an outfit that everyone will see themselves in. Olivia Ambani, design and marketing manager with the Kenyan fashion house Kiko Romeo, says she thinks a national dress is possible with a bit of flexibility. I think it will take uh, people being, I guess, more open to cohesion and accepting that, you know, if it's slightly more Maasai or, you know, more Kikuyu or more Luo or more coastal, it is okay because it still is part of the country and it will still represent us. Kenya does have its distinctive fabrics, most notable the checkered or striped shukas worn by the Maasai, the lessos or kangas, which originated on the coast, and the kikoi. But designer Wamboy Njogu says these were typically used as shawls or wraps, rather than as material to make into garments. We didn't have fabric traditionally in Kenya, so everything was based on skins and leathers. Our skills are in things like beadwork and in the leather handling and, and the embellishment, but the actual garment in the stitching culture was never there. But then all you needed was something to wrap around you and to keep the cold out, which is why we had sort of, sort of the shuka, the cloth that was always on top, and then the leather loincloth. Njogu says a national dress would probably consist of a Western-style garment that would be embellished with beadwork, coils, and other symbols of Kenyan cultures. She follows this type of trend in her clothing line, Mu Cow. One of her outfits incorporates a long leather apron similar to that worn by the Turkana people of northern Kenya. For its part, Kiko Romeo's designs draw upon cultures from all over Africa. Design and marketing manager Olivia Ambani. For instance, one of the collections that we have is Afro Punk collection. So there's a lot of um, imagery on it, um, embellishment that's taken from scarification, which is you know something that's quite big in the continent. Um, but then we give it you know the punk style, which is obviously something that's very British and you know taking, taken from that era. Ambani says more than 20 designers have come up with their own labels, which are beginning to be recognized locally and internationally, and that more and more designers are entering the industry. Patricia Mbella also mixes Kenyan and Western influences in her designs. She says she has not given up on the goal of having a distinctive Kenyan national dress. And to boost the Kenyan fashion industry, designer Wamboy Njogu urges female politicians and other women frequently in the public eye to purchase and wear Kenyan-made clothing. Kathy Maitani for VOA News, Nairobi.